Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to be talking about tests in general, so all the various standardized tests you talk about. So test names are the registered trademarks of the respective owner. Said owners are not affiliated with Educator.com. The College Board was not involved in the production of and does not endorse this course. So by now, I'm sure you've taken many, many tests in your life. I think you've probably taken at least well, something like 100 by now. So you're used to the idea of taking a test. And of course, every test you take is different. But there are many key ideas that you've probably started to notice are important to keep in mind when you're taking any test at all. The very first one is pacing. It's important to pay attention to how much time you've got for the test and to choose which questions to do and how much time to spend on any given question based on how much time you've got total and how much time you've got left when you're working on a question. So along those lines, it's also important to know when do you skip a question? When is it the right choice to skip a question? When is it the right choice to try to work really hard even if you're not sure you've got it immediately? Then you've also got ideas about when should you guess, when can you make an educated guess, when is guessing going to really be worthwhile, when you're just taking a wild stab in the dark, what is the best strategy for guessing. And then finally, the most general thing, and probably what your teachers want the most, and I personally want you to do as well, preparing and studying for the tests that you're taking. Getting ready so you really understand the material well, so you know what's going to be on the test, and so you've got a great understanding, you can answer all the questions that could be asked about that material. So that's pretty much what you've got for tests in general. Now, this course is designed specifically to teach to the SAT. So the point of this is to get you as good at the SAT as you can, but a lot of these skills and strategies can be applied to other tests. So keep these strategies in mind when you're approaching other tests, whether they're just normal school tests or other standardized tests that you're going to take down the road. A lot of these ideas are going to still stick around and they're going to be useful in those cases. Some of them are specific to the SAT, but a lot of it can be moved and applied to a lot of the tests you're going to encounter through your life. So, in general, I'm sure you already know this, but there are two ways a test question can be answered. They're going to set them up in two different ways. First off, multiple choice. They're going to give you a selection of choices, like A, B, C, D, E, as they do in the SAT. They'll give you some number of choices, and it's up to you to choose from those choices the correct answer. You look at them, and you decide which one of these answers the question I was giving. Then there's student produced responses, and those are going to be things where it's up to you to figure out what you're going to put in. Like when there's a question and then there's a blank line underneath it, and it's up to you to write in the answer. Or as you're often given on math tests in school, they ask you a question, they ask you to solve for x or something, and it's up to you to work through the equation and figure out what x is. There aren't choices for you at the end, it's just up to you to work it out. So you're going to be given things where it's up to you to just answer it, and you're not given any hints in the way the choices are set up. They could be called free response or something other than student produced response, but I use that specifically because that's the term that they use on the SAT, so we might as well get used to hearing it. So 